Glad uh, everybody could make it. Looks like there's still some people that are logging on, but uh, we'll go ahead and get started. We're about four minutes in here so far. So appreciate uh, everybody taking time to join today. We're gonna be talking about the 10 marketing tips for HVAC contractors um, that add the most value and help really fuel and grow the business. And so a few things before we get started, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is JB Kellogg. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO at Madwire. Uh, Madwire has uh, several products, but Marketing 360 is our flagship product. That's our platform um, that small businesses use to really manage and grow their business. And within that, there's top-rated local and websites 360 as well, which I'll talk about here um, throughout the presentation a little bit. Uh, I founded the company with my dad in 2009. You know, we grew fast from the two of us to over 500 people. We've worked with over 20,000 small businesses, um, hundreds of HVAC contractors over the years. Um, I've personally wor worked with HVAC contractors and basically I've gone back and reverse engineered everything we've learned over the years that really adds value and helps grow the business and consolidated all that into this presentation today that I'll be covering with you guys. Uh, that's our building, Madwire. Um, here's a better picture of it right here. It's a beautiful building. Um, you know, we have a great team, a great culture. You know, we take great pride in culture. This is a picture from our Mad Games uh, plan, you know, as a team. Of course, we're not able to get together like this at this current time, so we're missing the collaboration, but we're getting pretty good at Zoom in the process. So um, that's my family. A uh, family of six, three girls and a boy. Um, this picture is about a year ago. I'm just outside of uh, Phoenix on a family vacation. And this one here is me and my wife at a 70s party when I dressed up as Coach Mark E. Ting and I talked about marketing all night. <laughs> so that was a good time. Um, I'm very active on social media. I do, I've done hundreds of videos on marketing over the years. Um, our YouTube channel is rated the number one uh, marketing channel on YouTube. Um, so if you're looking for marketing tips and information outside of this presentation, check us out on YouTube. Um, we're Marketing 360 on YouTube. Um, you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well um, with the Marketing 360 handle. And then my personal profiles, just to keep the content different, I focus more on leadership related content. Um, you can search for my personal profiles just by searching my name, JB Kellogg. If you're inside of YouTube or Instagram, you should be able to find me that way. Um, a little bit about Marketing 360. Marketing 360 is a marketing platform. Um, it's a technology that you could use to manage and market your business. Um, there's also Websites 360 platform within it, which is a website platform, um, and Top Rated Local, which is a review platform. Those brands all live within one interface of Marketing 360. Um, we also have managed services. So outside of the technology, our team can stand in and help really manage and grow the business for you with regards to design, content, ad management, social media management, stuff like that. Um, so really the whole package. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about in this webinar today um, is essentially how to turn your website into a lead generating machine, how to leverage a CRM as your marketing database, how to uh, nurture your leads and customers with email marketing, how to get more reviews and referrals, how to dominate your competitors on Google My Business, which is Google Maps, how to rank highly for your best keywords and a lot more with content marketing, and how to become the most well-known HVAC company in your town on social media, how to increase your market share with multi-channel advertising, how to level up your marketing technology and talent, and then stay for number 10. There's a power tip there. I think you'll like it. Um, during the webinar, I have some panelists on with me today. They're all experts in digital marketing and can answer any of your questions you have along the way. So at the bottom of the webinar, you should see a chat and a Q&A button. And that's really where you can ask questions at any point. So if you have any questions of any kind, um, don't hesitate. Throw something in the chat or the Q&A and then our panelists, one of them will jump on it and make sure you get that question answered. Um, you can also call us. We have marketing consultants here that are always standing by willing to help offer free advice. Um, you can find that contact information if you go to marketing360.com. Um, just follow the steps there and then you can talk to somebody and they can give you a walkthrough. Um, real quick, I wanted to give a thanks to our sponsor. Um, that's Quick Products by Mainstream Engineering. Mike Lonis is on with us today. He's also a panelist. So 
Um, if you have questions, you can throw something in the chat for him. Um, you can also reach out to him directly. His contact information is there. Um, but mainstream engineering, you know, they have the quick products. You know, it's a division of uh, mainstream engineering. They've been around since 1986. So very well known, trusted company. Um, but they have more than 20 products for the HVAC industry. They're sold worldwide. Um, they're all made in the USA and they do a lot um, for the HVAC industry, you know, from acid testing to mitigation and treatment, EPA testing, certification, education, uh, motor controls, coil cleaners and protectants, um, HVAC technician tools and time savers, uh, the whole gamut. So definitely check them out. Uh, Michael's going to actually do a more in-depth walkthrough about 10 minutes um, at the end if you're interested in learning more. Um, I think he has some special offers and whatnot for you guys, so we'll cover that at the end in more detail. But other than that, let's just get started. Um, number one is turning your website into a lead generating machine. So your website, uh, when you think about it, that's your 24 seven salesperson. So your website never calls in sick. It can sell a thousand people at the exact same time. It works through all the holidays. It has the perfect pitch every time. So it's absolutely critical that you make sure that your website is that for your organization. It really needs to be your best salesperson in the digital world. And so here's an example of a site, you know, real nice site. Um, you know, when it comes down to it, you want to make sure the site's past the two and a half second rule, like these two, two designs too. Really, the questions that you want to answer are, who are you, what areas do you serve, and how do you contact you? So, who are you, what do you do, and how do you, how do you contact you? You know, those are the main things. And so, you can see on these two sites here, it's real quick. You can quickly, instantly see, you know, who they are, how to contact them, how to take the next step. And the two and a half second rule is important because people don't have a lot of patience. They're not going to spend time navigating your website to try to figure out if you provide the services that they need or if you're in the area that, they, that they're that they in, that kind of a thing. Um, if it's hard for them to fill out a um, appointment form or find your phone number, anything like that, you're going to lose them. And if they don't see that information at a high level in two and a half seconds, they're going to hit the back button and that's called a bounce. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure it's clean and simple for them to contact you. And these two designs are good examples of real nice, simple, clean designs. Also, you're going to want to make sure to build trust. So if you notice on this design in the bottom left hand corner here, there's this little trust badge, which is actually a Broncos business pick trust badge. And when you click it, it has some, you know, key trust builders there, trusted business, quality service, all all star staff. Um, you can, of course, navigate to see reviews and ratings. So this is all building trust in the prospect's mind. Um, here's another example on this site. There's the top rated local badge that you can put on your site in the bottom corner there. And when you click that, it's kind of the same thing. It pops up and it shows you the ratings and reviews. And you can also see that as it stands on the different review sites all in one spot. So if you have trust and traffic, you're going to get leads. So if you can get trust, trust, you know, traffic to your site and your site builds trust, they're going to call you. They're going to fill out a lead form. If they don't, if they're not sure, then they're going to go back and they're going to look for somebody else or they're going to they're going to try to research your reviews and everything online. Well, you can save them the time of doing that just by showing it on your site, like in these examples and build that trust right away. Uh, here is a website um, that has a really nice, easy navigation. So um, that's another tip is just a clear call to action and just clear navigation. This is a good design because it has just clear buttons on the site that you can see. Um, and you could just click those buttons and you're off and running. They're big, the fonts are large. It's just real easy to see it and navigate the site. And that's going to help with conversions. And here's a service page um, site where it has, you know, the drop down menus with all the service pages and location pages, which you're going to want to make sure to do as an HVAC business is make sure that you have uh, all the different services that you provide in their own pages. And that's going to help from an SEO perspective. And so building out that navigation on your site, like you're seeing here on this site is a good way to do it. Well, where they're keyword rich and Google will start to rank those pages organically so that your site gets traffic on those specific service pages when somebody searches for things they need like furnace repair, like you're seeing right here. That's a good way to get somebody into the site and convert because that the page has everything to do about service or uh, furnace repair. 
and then of course you want to make sure the site looks good on mobile you know um, mobile is critical these days i think you guys would all agree that you're probably spending most of the time navigating the internet when you're not at work anyways um, and it maybe even if you are but you're doing that on your phone so most uh, households nowadays almost don't really even have a computer you know they're just using their phone or a, or a tablet or something like that and that's just what they use so what you're going to want to make sure you do is have a really nice looking site on mobile. I still see a lot of sites these days that look pretty good on the desktop, uh, but when you look at it on the mobile, it's pretty clunky. And so you're losing out on leads there. Um, people especially don't have patience on mobile. So if your site um, isn't working well on mobile, they're going to hit back real time on that. So you want to make sure that your mobile site's good. And then above the fold, um, you have all the key information. And so what that means is they don't have to scroll. They don't have to thumb up and down. Like they can see who you are, what you do, and how to contact you all above the fold. And so you can see these three sites all do that um, in a different way, um, but they all have the same important information above the fold, which is perfect. And then you're gonna wanna make sure that your site looks better than your competitors. And so the one thing about your website is that's like your digital resume. And essentially when somebody is determining who they're gonna go with, they're judging you based on your website. Um, and so what happens is, is these two sites right here, are clearly the one on the left is better, right? But the thing is the one on the right might have 50 years of experience there. They might have much better techs, right? They, much have, they might have much better products, but the bottom line is I'm just assuming that they don't because their site's so outdated compared to the one on the left. So I'm gonna to go to the one on the left, even though maybe that's a brand new HVAC. And so this is the short you know, thought process that's running through everybody's head when they go to your website. And so be honest with yourself and maybe take a look at your website and some of your competitors' website. And would you go with you? you know, would you call you or would you call them? Because if the answer is them, then that's probably what your customers are thinking too. So make sure that your site really beats them when it comes to just the quality of the design. And then lastly here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a platform that's easy to update. Um, you don't wanna to have to rely on somebody for every little thing, you know, knowledge is power. And if you or somebody on your team is capable of jumping in and updating something on your website yourself, you're gonna be more nimble as an organization. So to do that, you're gonna need a platform that's easy to use. And so Website360, this is an example of that, is real easy to use. Um, this uh, example here, I just took a shot of a landscaper. I don't, I'm not sure I've ran into an HVAC that offers landscaping just yet, but <laughs> uh, maybe you do. So, but either way, the site's easy to edit and update and uh, kind of keep updated on your own, which is, which is a key differentiator. And then I put a note here too, bill pay. Bill pay is real nice these days. I mean, people want to be able to pay their bill just, you know, on the online. So if you have a bill pay on your website where they can jump in there and throw their invoice number in there and pay their bill, um, that's going to be real effective for you and them. And that's just what people prefer. So that's something you want to think about your website being able to do. All right, let's jump into tip two. Um, that's leveraging a CRM as your marketing database. And real quick with the CRM, uh, before I jump into this detail, you know, you can have a CRM do a couple different things. You might already have a CRM for managing your leads and your customers and your trucks and stuff like that. And that's fine. Um, it may not be something that you're using necessarily from a marketing perspective though. And so that's what you should be thinking about. You can also have a separate CRM that operates more as a marketing database. So you can kind of have the combination of the two. But the end goal is, is that when somebody fills out a sign up form, like in this example here, if they filled out this free estimate form on your website, what you really want is that to be able to connect to a CRM or a marketing database to build lists for marketing automation and email automation. And so there's an example of what I mean by that. So if you have the form on your website, like you're seeing here, you can basically, when that's submitted, automatically send that to a CRM or a marketing database or both. And then that will create lists and those lists will be based on maybe what their interest level was. So in this example, it could have been heating or cooling or something else. Maybe you offer plumbing. It'll put them into those categories. Also, if they picked a time that they preferred, like in this example, morning, afternoon, evening, or urgent, that could also put them into particular lists. And then those lists can be used for nurturing automation. So sending them specific content as it relates to maybe their appointment time, 
or maybe heating versus cooling, that kind of a thing. And so that you can properly nurture them in an automated way. The power of a CRM or a marketing database, you know, allows you to do that without anybody lifting a finger. You can really nurture your leads and your customers in an automated way. And also, of course, a CRM, I'm sure a lot of you are using um, some sort of a CRM, but beyond just the automation piece, you know, just managing your scheduling, your payments, your assigning work, managing your team, your customers, your tasks, um, uploading files, things like that are invaluable to an HVAC. Um, the more streamlined and consistent you can be, the easier it is to onboard employees and be consistent in the, in the service that you're delivering. And so a CRM allows for that. This is a viewpoint, a view of a Marketing 360 CRM, um, which is customizable to, to any business need, such as HVAC. All right, tip three, let's talk about nurturing your leads and customers since we were just talking about that um, and how that would work and some tips that you can use to really close more deals from a leads perspective with email nurturing, um, but also generate a lot more sales from your existing customers and increase the lifetime value revenue of those customers. And so first off, you're going to want to make sure that you have segmented lists. So segmented lists are important because you don't want to just email the same message to every contact that you have in your database. You know, ideally you have that segmented so you can customize that messaging. And so over here on the right, I have some examples, some things to think about, um, but a list for leads, a list for customers, and then further segmenting by commercial versus residential would make sense. Maybe neighborhood, if you're capturing that and having lists for people in different neighborhoods would be cool. Um, heating versus cooling, so their interest level, maybe they had an air conditioner installed but never a heater, you know, that kind of thing. You're going to want to know that. So having segmented lists is going to allow you to email those communications to them, you know, so it's targeted to that audience. So uh, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is think about lead nurturing. So with lead nurturing, this is when somebody fills out a lead form on your website or somebody inputs like your front desk person or a tech puts a new lead into your CRM. You're gonna wanna start nurturing them. So the first thing you wanna do is send them a thank you. And so when somebody fills out like a booking form on your website, uh, the first email should be, hey, thanks for reaching out. You know, this email example I'm showing here on the right is an example of that. Thanks for reaching out. Um, we're gonna be in contact with you as soon as possible, learn more about us. And then there's some information there that's about your company. You should immediately here again, double up on the trust. So maybe follow up with some, your reviews, your ratings, your trust badges, uh, maybe your process information can be included in there. Ultimately, they wanna to try to understand, you know, why should they choose you? So when you actually reach out to them, you just close that deal. And then also you can follow up with a nurture track, you know, maybe with coupons, things like this to continue to stay top of mind so that they move forward with, uh, with using you as an, as an HVAC. You're also gonna wanna send seasonal campaigns. So seasonal campaigns are applicable to leads and customers. So you can send these types of communications to either one. Uh, but start thinking about the seasons of your business. So obviously what an HVAC offers uh, people in the winter is different than the summer. So the emails should all line up with that. So here's a couple examples of some emails, you know, along that same track. So this one here, hot summer special, $49 routine, routine checkup. That's a good email as you lead into summer, you know, people need to start prepping for that. And then here's one over here for the winter, tis the season to breathe easier, 20% off, you know, that, you know, for like cleaning the filters, you know, you want the fresh air after the dusty fall, that kind of a thing. And so start thinking about these emails, you can send holiday emails, things like this uh, throughout the year. This is just going to be top of mind to people when they when they get it and they're gonna go, oh, yeah, you know what, I do need to do that. And then they're gonna, you know, reach out to you. Instead of them thinking they need that and then Googling and going maybe with somebody else, they just keep going with you. So you build that lifetime value. Here's some uh, other customer nurture campaigns to think about. One of them that's a no brainer is reviews and referrals. So anybody where you complete service with them, you're gonna wanna make sure you ask for a review. There's lots of ways to ask for a review, uh, but email automation is definitely one of them. So if you're using a CRM and there's, let's say there's a checkbox like job done, when that's checked, it sends the email asking for the review is the thinking. And then here's an email example right here that works pretty good. You know, how was your experience with us? Was it good? Was it bad? Just keep it simple, right? One or the other. 
The thing that's nice about this strategy is if they click good, then immediately it can lead them to leave in the review publicly perfect, right? If they click bad, what you're gonna wanna do there is route them to a feedback form on your website. That way it's not just pushing them to leave a public review, it's actually you know, sending them to a feedback form on your site that's private, where you can ask even more questions to try to understand what happened there and build that relationship. So that's a good email. And then here is another email, um, which is more educational. This is prepping your HVAC system for winter. And here's 10 tips on how to do that. Uh, what I found over the years is educating your customers and your leads is really valuable and uh sorry it sounds like somebody's chatting the screens having issues hopefully you guys can see the screen okay sounds like it's working um so educating your your customers or your potential customers on doing things like how to prepare their system is good because what i found over the years is by educating them a lot of times you know, some of them will do it on their own, but in most cases, they're just gonna call you because they see you as the trusted source that'll take care of it for you. And then subject lines with emails is really important. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure you have strong subject lines because the thing is, is emails um, are something that people get every day and they're not clicking into them all. And so you want them to actually open your email. And the way to get them to open it most effectively is to have a good subject lines. So here's some examples of some good subject lines. What you're gonna to wanna to do is try to insert their name in the email subject line. And the right email tools allow you to do that automatically. So this could be an example, hey JB, it's time, right? That might be a good one for maintenance. I'm like, hey JB, it's time, what is this? You know, I click into it and then it's like, yeah, it's time for your maintenance. You know, you haven't done it for six months. Um, here's another one. Um, I'll be in your neck of the woods next week, JB. That makes me want to click that. You know, what does that mean? And that would be a perfect one if you had the neighborhood segmentation. So if you're going to a certain neighborhood, you could email that neighborhood, that kind of email, and then boom, the, how efficient is that where your rep can just jump around all the, the houses in the, on the same block? And, you know, that'd be huge. Here's another one. Wow, JB, it's going to be cold. That's a good email for a cold snap that's coming up. You know, if that's like a public service announcement type email where you're just warning people, hey, it's going to be really cold. The last thing is, you know, you want to be sitting at home freezing. So have us check it out. Um, and then here's another one. Time flies, JB. That might be like a year after uh, install of a new piece of equipment. Hey, it's been a year. Time flies. You know, let's get in there and check on that. So those are some things to think about to get people to open the emails. Um, some email best practices that you want to think about is personalization. I just touched on it with the subject line there, but personalization is like inserting people's name. That keeps it real personal. Um, another one here is sending from a personal email versus a company can be helpful. So maybe if all your emails are coming from Nancy at, you know, it feels more personal than putting in like a, like a company type of an email. Um, also, you want to verify your domain name. If you don't do that, a lot of emails go into spam. So you can Google search how to do that. Um, you want to design for mobile. Just make sure that your emails look good on the phone. Also, A-B test. You know, try testing two different subject lines and see which one opens better and then just stick with that one in the future. Um, you also want to test before sending. So send yourself a test, click all the links, make sure it works before you send it to everybody. Um, you also want to make sure you're thinking about the right days and times for your audience. Um, we find that generally Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, those are generally pretty good days and the morning is usually better. Um, you also want to include the address in the email. There's regulations around that and also an unsubscribe. You want to always make sure to do that. Those will keep you out of trouble. Um, and then focus on high value content, right? Only email things that you think help people add value are good reminders. Um, if it's not adding value, they're gonna unsubscribe and that's gonna ultimately hurt you. And then lastly, you're gonna wanna use an email platform for all this, something that's easy to use, um, that you're able to um, automate as much as possible. Marketing 360 has a great email platform if you wanna check that out. Um, there's a lot of different email platforms out there, but the automation piece is critical. So talking to the CRM is something you wanna look for. All right, tip four is to get more reviews and referrals. 
um, reviews and referrals, you know, in my mind, reviews are like the digital salespeople standing on the streets of America referring people to you all day long. If you don't have any reviews, there's nobody referring you business out there in the digital world. So if you have a thousand reviews out there and they're all good, you essentially have a thousand salespeople referring people to you because what people do these days when they think about who they're going to work with is they search for reviews. And if you have a lot of good reviews, you're gonna get a lot of people coming to you. That's like the new referral. So what you wanna do is build up your reviews. And so some ways to do that, you know, extending off of the email automation I've been talking about here, here's a journey that you could set up with email that works pretty good, that gets reviews and referrals. So in this example, day one, you complete a project. And so it asks for a review. The system sends an email asking for the review. All right, when they receive the email, they have some options here. If they click, it was great service, they're gonna then leave a review, obviously. So that's where the journey follows up with asking for a referral. So if they click to leave a good review, the next email that would follow up like a day later would be asking for a referral because you know they had a good experience. The other option in that email would be to click they didn't have a great experience. And in that case, you just want the journey to end. It wasn't a great experience. They probably went to leave feedback. It's over, right? And then there's also the possibility they got an email asking for a review and they didn't do anything. There was no clicks. So in that case, you wait about three days, then the system automatically sends email number two, which is again asking for the review, right? It's just repeating the process here. And then if they still don't click anything, you wait another three, four days, and then it sends them another email, the email three asking for the review. If, it, if at any point here they click great, you ask for a referral. If they click not great, the journey ends. So that's just an example of how that would work to help both build reviews and referrals in an automated way. Text messaging also is extremely beneficial and efficient at building reviews. Um, even with email being you know, set up with all the best practices, there's gonna be a lot of cases where nobody does anything there. Um, so text messaging is much more effective there. Pretty much everybody sees the text messages, right? I mean, we all have phones. We don't let text messages go unviewed. It's just standard. So asking for somebody for a review on text is you know, very effective. Here's some examples of how to do that. So you can do it one of two ways. You can have somebody like your front desk person. This is part of their job responsibility and they do it. Um, or what's even more effective is having your technician do it right at the time of service. And so here's some examples of some good text messages that would be effective. So, hey JB, it's Nancy from HVAC Plus. I wanted to say thank you again for using us. Part of my job is to make sure that you're having a good experience. Uh, would you do me a favor and provide your feedback? It should only take a minute of your time, go here. When they click this link, see that, it just goes to the feedback page on your site where they can click to leave a review or provide feedback, works pretty good. Um, then down here is the, where the tech would do it. This is where the tech would be talking to the customer directly and make sure they have a good experience and then say, hey, do you have a second where I could you know, have you send me a, re a review real quick? I'm just gonna send you a text right now while we're standing here, right? And so in this one, it's thanks again for choosing us and doing this for me, here's the link. It should only take a minute and would really help me out if you could do it today. Thanks, right? That just helps them be like, ah, yeah, this is a nice guy. I'll just do it today, you know? And that's a good way to get reviews. Now you're gonna wanna track your text reviews and referrals and set high standards. So as Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross would say here, the tech with the most reviews gets a Cadillac, the tech with the second most reviews gets steak knives, and the tech with the third most reviews gets fired. <laughs> Um, but in all seriousness, um, this is actually something that you should be doing in terms of tracking and making it a competitive thing with your techs. Um, some things we have seen work really well are spiffs. So $25 per review is a good one. We've seen that be effective with a lot of HVACs. Also team bonuses. So, hey, if we get 50 reviews this month, team bonus. You know, we're doing a party, pizza party, everybody gets a hundred bucks, you know, something like that is huge. Donations are a popular too. Like, hey, every review the company gets, we're donating $25 to XYZ. That's effective. Um, try referral coupon codes for your technicians for referrals. So in, in other words, hey, if, you, if your neighbor goes with us, have them tell you so-and-so sent you, you know? So you can kind of track referrals that way. That can be effective. 
And then make sure you have somebody monitoring the feedback forms. That's when somebody has a bad experience and they fill out a feedback form. Uh, make sure you look at that. You try to resolve those situations with those customers and win them over, but also coach your team so that that never happens again, right? Um, a mistake made uh, twice is a decision, right? And so don't allow the second mistake to happen twice. That's the thinking. Um, one thing that you're going to want to do, which I'm sure a lot of you do this now, but is leave door hangers. So when you're working on a neighborhood home, um, or even, even commercial for that matter, drop off one of these at the neighbor's doors, you know, throw a, throw a hanger on there. Um, I would call that a twofer. So you got the one job in the neighborhood, that's a one-fer, right? And then if you drop the door hanger on the neighbors and they call, that's a two-fer, right? That's unbelievable. So that's how you get a huge return on investment. Um, it can be like the examples you're seeing here, or it can be as simple as, hey, we just worked on your neighbor's house and we were in the neighborhood and we're probably gonna come back and check up. We'd love to check on yours, set an appointment, something to that effect, you know? Just so people are like, yeah, you know what? That's actually easier. And my neighbor's using them, so they must be good. So yeah, I'll use them too. And so that really helps helps with that list building of the neighborhood where you can come knock out multiple jobs at once. Here's a good thing on in exceeding customer appreciation and experience, and it's, it's essentially this follow up and thank you. Um, I'm calling it the customer appreciation package here, um, but it would be pretty cool um, if your HVACs put together just a small package they could give these customers after the job. So an example here would be a thank you card um, with some business cards that they could share, uh, maybe even some gift cards um, or some coupons to use you. So they could give those to their friends and family or their neighbors to save 10, 20 bucks. Um, so just a small little package that you just, you know, you can print these things for pretty cheap, give them to all your technicians. So when they're done with the job, they ask the customer if the experience was good. They give them the thank you care package. They say they appreciate them. Customer's happy. Then they ask for a review. That's when you send them the text message for the review. And then a week later here, I'd have the front desk follow up again, just to make sure that everything went well and, and double back on it. And also try to schedule that next appointment, whether that's six months from now, a year from now, you know, maybe even a month from now, you know, they can, re they can schedule that so that your calendar is always full, that revenue is coming in. Um, and then lastly, you know, managing reputation can be complex, especially with all the review sites out there these days. Um, so you're gonna wanna review management software and a platform to make this stuff easy for you, to ask for reviews with email, with text, to see them all in one place. And so look for something like that. Marketing 360 has a real nice interface where you can see all your reviews in one place and keep track of that stuff. Tip number five is to dominate your competitors on Google My Business. Google My Business is huge these days. Um, think of Google My Business as your Google website. So this is your website on Google. And Google more and more is trying to get people that are using Google to just get all the information they need without ever leaving Google. Um, so more and more, you're probably seeing less clicks to your website and more clicks coming straight from Google My Business. And so here's an example of a Google My Business um, listing over here on the right. And here again, this is just like your Google website. So what you're gonna wanna make sure you do is totally populate it. Make sure it has pictures, it has reviews, all the content's op, you know, populated and everything. So here's some tips on how to optimize it here. Um, you wanna complete your profile. You wanna make sure you have your primary and secondary categories correct. You're gonna wanna make sure you exactly match your website keywords with the categories that you're using here on Google My Business. That'll help both of those rank higher. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have an appointment button in there, photos, reviews. You wanna post weekly. Google My Business has a posting feature now. You can post weekly, make sure you're doing that. Um, and also you wanna keep the profile updated and fresh. So have a process and a calendar reminder every month to go in there and update something, up, up, add a picture, add a post. Every time you update it, Google sees that you're engaged and so they're gonna rank you higher. Like this company over here, um, this company for Loveland Heating and Air, Swan Heating, they're number one. They have 500 reviews, five star rating, that's awesome. They're also over here in the map view, they're on top twice. They're running an ad within Google My Business and they also rank organically. They're dominating the real estate here. Um, and there's so many people using Google My Business to find businesses like HVAC. It's just like the biggest no brainer in the history of the world to rank high on Google My Business if you can. So you need to do everything you can to do that. 
if you do it right, uh, Google My Business will become your number one lead source and the highest return on investment um, that you have of all your marketing channels. So definitely sink your teeth into that. And then, of course, outside of Google My Business, there's just a ton of different directory sites out there. Uh, make sure that you're listed on them. There's 50 plus local directories that people are using these days. Um, so make sure you optimize those and exactly match the same sort of content as you, you've done on Google My Business and they'll all benefit, all boats will rise there. Top rated local, definitely look into that. There's free listings on top rated local where you can list your business and it will automatically allow you to pull all your ratings and reviews from all of those sites into one and then put that badge on your website. Um, also through top rated local, you have the opportunity to submit your business to all these other directory sites and listing sites, um, which is definitely the easy button as opposed to logging into all 51 by one and doing that. And then make sure you use a listing management software. If it's not top rated local, you know, it's going to save you time. Like I just talked about marketing 360 has a listings feature that does all of this where you can see all your listings in one place and update them in one shot. All right. Tip six is how to rank high for the best keywords uh, with content marketing. First off, you're going to want to do your research and your planning. Content marketing starts with research and planning. And so there's lots of pieces to that. There's keywords, hashtags, et cetera. Over here on the right, you're looking at the keywords. Um, these are keywords uh, based on the search volume in Denver. And so as you can see here, like furnace repair 280 times a month is how often that's being searched in Denver. And so if you ranked at the top of the page for that on Google, that's 280 people that need that right now that would be seeing you, right, per month. So it starts adding up pretty quick if you start to rank for all these keywords, but ranking for these keywords, you know, is no easy task. Um, you need to create a, a lot of content continually to rank for those keywords. And so content marketing allows you to do that. Here's some hashtags to think about. Um, we've found that these hashtags are uh, most effective generally for HVACs. Um, they're kind of broken into three categories here. And you know, I, I'll share this deck with you guys after the meeting and the, and the video so you can get access to this. So don't try to write these all down right now. But when you're using social media like Instagram, these would be hashtags that people would be using. And you know, people say, hey, nobody's looking for an HVAC on Instagram. And, I would completely disagree with that. Um, more and more people are searching on social media now than ever. My daughter's an example. Um, she doesn't really even use Google. Like literally she'll search everything in Instagram. So if you talk about, hey, she needs an HVAC, she'll go into Instagram and actually search HVAC in her local area and see who comes up. And if you came up and you looked professional, that's who she'd go with, right? And so that's the young demographic. So more and more, you're going to start seeing this. So you need to have a social presence and you need to use these hashtags. Um, to find ideas on topics, I have found that YouTube is really effective for that. And so this is a hack on YouTube you can use. If you go into YouTube search bar and you search something like how underscore air conditioning, YouTube will actually pull back everything that's most popularly searched, you know, in between these words. So look at this. How does air conditioning work, right? How to cool a room without air conditioning. People are actually typing these topics in YouTube every day and on Google. So if you created content that was exactly phrased that way, you're going to rank pretty quick because um, that's what they call a long tail keyword. The more words, the easier it is to rank higher because there's less competition. So this is a great way to get ideas on topics to create content about. Also keep tabs on holidays and seasonality. So spring, summer, fall, winter, what are the types of services you offer? What is the messaging gonna be like there? What's the content you're gonna create there? Um, and then the holidays, you know, there's tons of holidays. There's at least one holiday every month that you could build a campaign around. Um, so start thinking about that. Um, then you're gonna wanna do your on-site and off-site um, optimization. So once the research in, is in place, you're gonna wanna optimize everything from a foundational perspective, which is the upfront work. Um, you're gonna wanna optimize your website and there's some tips over here on how to do that. And you're gonna wanna optimize off-site, which is outside of your website. So that would be like Google My Business, your listing sites, other third-party sites, your social media profiles. You're gonna to wanna to completely optimize all those based on the research in the same sort of a way so that everything ranks higher. 
once that initial foundational work's done, um, you're going to want to do the ongoing content creation. And like I put here, building fresh content until the end of time. <laughs> it just never stops, right? You need to continually create content for these different topics and terms and services that you provide so that you're always top of mind and you're always keeping that high ranking or climbing higher in the ranking. So types of content you want to create um, are building pages on your site. Uh, we call those monster pages because these aren't just little pages. We want pages with massive amounts of content. So we're calling them monster pages. Um, you want to create videos. Videos is huge these days. So video creation is essential. Infographics, blog posts, press releases, emails, social posts. I mean, the list goes on. There's lots of types of content you can create and you're going to want to plan to ongoingly do that. Here's some examples of the monster pages. So these monster pages here, you can see they're all, you know, keyword rich for those specific services. There's even location based keywords in here. So it ranks in your local area. And you can see here, I mean, there's no small amount of content on these pages and that's pretty beefy and that's going to rank high. Here's some examples of some videos. So these videos here are great for YouTube. And the beauty of YouTube is if you use that hack I showed you and you make videos with the title of the video, just exactly what people are looking for, it's actually gonna show up on the first page of Google. So you see this example here, this is how to light a furnace. These videos are showing up at the top of Google. And these are people that created videos that had those keywords in them. And so you could have a video ranking number one on Google for these terms and get business that way. And then, of course, infographics. Infographics are great because they're good for website content, blog content. They're also really good for social media. Um, and they're also great sales collateral tools. So you can actually print these and have your salespeople use these when they talk to their customers. And it shows, you know, different things. How do you do certain things? How to save money with a good system? You know, so there's an endless amount of ideas. These are just some examples of some ones that, you know, we've designed over the years that have been real effective for you. So that's a good strategy. And then this is here, this is what I call the content NATO. So it's like a tornado of content and it starts with that center piece of content. So if you write a good piece of content here, like, you know, five tips on how to prepare your furnace for winter, for example, if you write one long form, nice piece of content, that's great for a website content for a monster page. It can also be an email, great email. You can also pull blurps out of it and quotes out of it for multiple social posts. You can also create one or more videos, pulling it out as the script. And then you can update ad campaigns. So really it's not as much work as you think if you can really focus on that core piece of content and then everything else kind of spins off of that. And then you're going to want to make sure you distribute it and promote it. And that's through these different channels here. And last, lastly, you're going to want to optimize and uh, analyze as you, uh, as you go through time to make sure that you're just doing more of what's working and less of what's not. And so to really to do that, you're going to want to track your results, track your keyword ranking, see if you're improving, and you're going to want to use you know, software to do that. So Marketing 360 has a great keyword tracker. You can see exactly what you're ranking for, how you're improving over time. It's really a nice system, so check that out. Tip seven here is uh, becoming the most well-known HVAC company in town on social media. Like I said earlier, social media is just, it's the new TV. Everybody's on social media now. That's where they're spending their time in the evenings, right? They're just clicking through social media. So you want to be present there. And so start thinking about the channels. Um, the channels that we're finding the most uh, time people are spending on is uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Houses popular for contractors. Um, of course, Google My Business. You know, people are using more in, a, in an inbound format, but definitely have your profile and your content optimized for Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. LinkedIn's good for commercial business. Um, audiences, you're going to want to think about that in your local community. So start thinking about what are the neighborhoods you want to be connected with on social media? Uh, what are the schools or the sports teams or the city events or the nonprofits? Um, what are contractors and partners that you have? What are they doing on social? How can you connect with them? Or local businesses, how do you follow their content and engage with them? Start thinking about that. And you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to build an idea library. The one thing about social media is um, you can really quickly kind of draw blanks on what you should post today. And so what you're going to want to do is have an idea library. I would recommend a spreadsheet. 
um, put together like a Google spreadsheet that your team can be, you know, collaborating on and just build up tons of ideas in there. So some things you want to put in there are like a list of hashtags, a list of holidays, a list of quotes that you think are good quotes to share with people. They don't even have to be HVAC related necessarily. Jokes, people like funny stuff on social media. Uh, blog posts that would be good to share, infographics, videos, the list goes on. I won't go through all of these. We'll share the video afterwards. But if you have this huge library of ideas, now it's easy. Now, hey, I need to post today. Perfect. I'm going to go grab something out of there. I'm going to post it. I'm going to be done with it. Um, so that's what the value is there. And then you're going to want a good content strategy, good posts, um, different variety. So here's some examples of some social posts, you know, like this looks cool. You know, this is a nice looking post here by an HVAC. You know, there's a couple nice examples. People like dogs, right? Here's a testimonial from a happy customer. It's a cool idea. Here's one actually to get people to apply. Maybe you need some more technicians. So this is a good post. Um, so just start thinking about like your branding and the types of posts that you want to have out there and just start, just start doing it every day. And then think about your schedule and your calendar. Um, what does your cadence look like? Are you posting every day, twice a week, once a week? You know, start thinking about that. I would recommend at least once a, a week, once every two weeks, you know, should be the absolute kind of max on that. Um, post, you know, the more the better, but, but you don't want to post so much that people are kind of irritated and they stop following you either. So I would say one post a week is a pretty good cadence. One every two weeks is, is okay. More than that is getting kind of thin. So think about who's responsible, right? Who's in charge and make sure that they actually execute that. And then also you're going to want to make sure you engage. So Engagement is really a key to social media. A lot of people think posting is the key, but it's actually not. Um, engaging actually is more important. And that's essentially just following your community and engaging with them. So the, the best way to do that for an HVAC is to follow local nonprofits, other businesses for commercial, um, other neighborhoods, city programs, sports teams, and you're gonna to wanna to like and, and comment on their content. So whenever they post something, like it, um, if you have anything valuable to add, leave a comment. That'll make them like you. And when they like you, they talk about you and they refer you and they use you. Um, also, when you're commenting, other people that like them see you too. So if you're commenting on a nonprofit, everybody who is a part of that nonprofit sees that. And then when they need an HVAC, who do they think about, right? They think about you. So that's huge. And then you're going to want to analyze and optimize your performance. Marketing 360 has a great functionality for that just to track your performance overall and also manage your scheduling and your posting all through a software interface. Tip seven here is to become the most well-known HVAC company in town on social media via the four P's and that's social proofing. And so when people are thinking about who they're going to work with, they check their reviews and they check their social media. The social media piece is the proofing piece. And so the four P's are your professional. That means when they check for you on social media, you have a profile and it looks good and your content looks nice. And so you look professional. Number two is your popular. It means that you actually have people liking your content and you actually have some engagement that's occurring there. Number three is you're proactive, which means that you're proactively engaging with the community, like I just talked about. So you're not just a one way street, you're doing, you're both posting content and engaging with other content. And number four is you promote. And by promoting, I mean, you're using the distribution channels that I talked about earlier. You're actually investing a little bit and promoting your content so it's seen by more people in the community. You put a little budget behind it. All right, we got a couple more tips here, guys, and, and uh, we'll be wrapping up here. I know we're running close on time. Tip eight is to increase your market share with multi-channel advertising. And essentially here, the tagline is, you can't control where your customers are, but you can control if you're there. And so that's the thing. At the, at the baseline, marketing is just about being where your customers are. That's it, right? And being where your customers are these days is digital. And they're on all these different places over here on the right, right? They're spending time on social media, on Google, on, and in other places. They're listening to digital radio. They're watching digital TV. So if you have a presence in all those places, you're going to be everywhere your customers are, and that's going to equal more business. That's multi-channel advertising. And so some tips with multi-channel advertising. Um, in this order, you're going to want to do brand search campaigns. So brand search campaigns is when somebody searches your name on Google. 
And I know I always hear people say, well, I don't want to do that because I'm already ranking organically. Well, this is a good example. Yeah, you may, you might be number one organically, but look, you're not even on the page. Like this is an ad, 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 ad map. So you're not even visible. They have to scroll down to find you when they search your own name, right? So make sure that when somebody searches your own name, you run an ad that's right on top. You're going to get a ton more business that way. It's a huge ROI. So it's a huge return. So make sure you do it and you can control the ad copy that way. Next thing you want to do is think about your campaigns from a seasonal perspective for HVAC. So people don't care about getting a new HVAC system, right? They really don't, but they do care about making sure their family's warm on Thanksgiving, right? So start thinking about your messaging there. This is a good one here. Keep your family warm for Thanksgiving, you know, get a checkup on your heating system, right? Or how about this one? Stay cool on the fourth, right? Get ahead of it. Start thinking about this stuff and thinking about your messaging on that front. Uh, Multi-channel retargeting is critical and retargeting is basically when somebody goes to your website and leaves, retargeting is those ads that follow that follow them around the internet. So in this example, this is an ad that they would see as they browse all these other places after they go to your website. Or maybe they first saw you on Facebook and now they go to YouTube. Now they're seeing this ad because they saw you there. That's a huge uh, profitable way to get business. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you dominate search for the very best keywords, definitely at least your name. And you wanna start with Google My Business. So I talked about this earlier, but this is an example where a company is ranking number one because they're in the ad position on the maps and also number one because they're organically on the maps. They have the top two spots here. That's literally almost 50% of the real estate here without scrolling down. So, you know, marketing is like it used to be location, location, location. Uh, but today the new location is your digital location. And the best keywords are the streets of America that people are driving on digitally. Do you have a presence there, right? If you don't, that's what you wanna work on. You're gonna get a lot of business. Here's an example of the Google search page where this company is here in the, in the local service ads section and also ranking number one in the ad section. So they're there twice, another, another way to get great business. And then on social media, you know, this is a good ad example that's kind of funny. You know, a lot of people would like this ad. Uh, it would catch your eye and it's, you know, it's been a dusty early spring if you cleaned your vents, you know. If you're running that on social media, I can guarantee you somebody's going to pause for a second and they're going to look at this, right? That's going to capture their business. If I just put here, you know, increase your energy efficiency on your home, I don't care about that, right? So, so think about the messaging, what's going to be more effective. And then increasing awareness outside of these social channels would be things like digital billboards. Those are on the highway, the digital billboards. You can run ads there. You can run ads on digital radio like Pandora or Spotify and digital TV these days. So you're everywhere. You're running ads on all these places, you're everywhere. And then how much should you invest? Um, here's some tips. Invest seven to 10% of your sales back into marketing right? That's going to propel your business forward and sales will grow and your marketing budget will grow right along with it. and You'll continue to grow. So that's huge. Um, I talked about this earlier, but what do you pay for your space right now or your trucks right now on a, from a lease perspective? Well, what are you paying your digital real estate, right? Are you, what's your lease on your digital real estate? Because if that's zero, then you're probably having bad locations, right? You're not getting sales. What do you pay your top salesperson, right? Your, if your website's your number one salesperson, what are you paying it? You know, at least give it a seven to 10% commission on sales. How about that? You know, that would be a great way to determine your budget. Um, you can also use marketing math. So here's a good equation, you know, if, figure out what your sales goal is, then based on your average sale, that'll determine how many sales that you need to reach that goal. And based on your opening ratio of your leads, let's say you open 20% of your leads, that would determine how many leads you need to hit your, sa your total sales goal, right? And based on your cost per lead that will, and how many leads you have, that'll determine what your budget needs to be. So you can pretty much back into what your marketing budget needs to be in order to achieve your sales goal. And it's almost a mathematical certainty you'll achieve it if you put the right budget in there. What you want to do is you want to figure out this marketing math. Once you figure out this marketing math, you're really ready to scale. And lastly, you want to optimize and, uh, and analyze all of this through some sort of reporting engine. Marketing 360 has a multi-channel ads reporting uh, to show you what's working and what's not. So you can put more money behind what's working. Tip nine is to level up your marketing technology and talent. 
And really when you think about that, you know, starting with the technology and tools is you want a platform that has everything you need. So everything I just walked through from the foundational pieces like your website and CRM to trust and traffic builders like reputation, social and content to ad management all in one platform. You wanna think about that, just makes you more efficient. And then you want a team of talented people that are the difference makers here. So you could give the greatest platform in the whole world to person A and person B and the performance would not be the same. Um, and that's because of the talent level of these individuals. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have strong, talented people behind driving your marketing campaigns. Um, so start there. Here's some people that you need on your team, ideally, uh, to do that. Somebody good with content, good with social, good with reputation, good with ad management, good with vision. This is really the dream team that you wanna have. Um, marketing 360 is a, a nice solution because it has everything I just talked about in one platform. Um, all the way around the bend, and it's all mobile friendly. You can do marketing on your phone, right? Remember those old NFL com you know, commercials? I watch football on my phone, you know? <laughs> this is the same thing, but this is marketing on your phone with Marketing 360. Um, as far as pricing to Marketing 360 goes, it's $3.95 a month for the base platform, which is this tools piece here. And then if you, if you don't have your own team of talented people, you can add them on to your plan, starting at 300 a month for these different talent positions. You just add those onto your plan. That's how it works with Marketing 360. And here's the power tip, guys. This is the last one on um, how to make your brand the most recognized brand in town. So imagine this. Uh, this is a logo of a uh, HVAC that we designed at one point, and I don't think they ever actually used it, but I liked it, so I kept it for my presentation. Um, but imagine this. Imagine that you see that truck on the road as you leave for work in the morning. And then when you get to work, somebody sends you a funny video. And at the beginning of the funny video, you see the same company here. Is, it has a little video ad running before they hit the skip button. And then you go to work out at lunchtime and you listen to your music and sure enough, here comes an ad on digital radio for the Friedman Mechanical. And then you go to your kids uh, game after uh, you get out of work and you can see sure enough at the, at the high school game, there's a banner right there in the field. And then on your way home uh, for the day, you see a digital billboard, same company. And then you get home and sure as hell, they just did service on the neighbor's house and you got this hanging on your door handle. And you go in that night after dinner and you're on social media like everybody else in the world and you see this as you're on Instagram and Facebook. And then you just can't take it anymore. So you go to Google and you search their name and they're three times on the page, on the top, in the ads and in the maps. Would you not capture business by having that kind of a presence, right? And so that goes back to more mind share equals more market share. Marketing is about capturing the mind, but the only way to capture it of the mind is to be there, right? You have to be present. Um, some power tips here, donate small amounts of money to every nonprofit in your city for exchange to get your logo somewhere, right? Get placed, doesn't cost a lot of money, gets the visibility, gets the trust. Um, remember, marketing is not an expense, it's an investment. It should be paid uh, more than your highest paid employee because it's the most important one. It's driving you new business. If you do that, you'll grow. And then remember uh, to increase the valuation of your business is to grow your brand. So you want your brand to be like the Nike or the Under Armour of your town when it comes to HVAC. If you do that, the value of your business will go up significantly. And so invest in the value of your business and your brand. And that's it, guys. I really appreciate it. We were almost, we we're one minute off on time. So I really appreciate it. Hopefully uh, all your questions were answered throughout. Um, if not, go to marketing360.com talk to one of our marketing consultants. They can give you a guided one-on-one -on -one presentation and also do some research for you, do some keyword research for you for free, um, for you specifically, um, and uh, answer any questions that you have. Also, um, I have Michael on here. Hopefully he can unmute here. I want him to walk through some of the great products that Quick Products and Mainstream Engineering has um, and some of the value they can bring your organization on that front. So let me do that. Michael, are you on? I am. Thank you, JB. I am on. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I guess the only thing is you have to uh, drive the slides, right? I don't think I can. I'll drive it for you. Yeah, if you want to let okay, me know perfect. when to go to the next one. Sure. Well, first of all, I wanted to thank you for uh, allowing us to participate. Um, we obviously are uh, very happy with the chance to uh, sponsor this webinar. I think uh, 
you provide a lot of great uh, insight. Uh, just being that I, I live and breathe in this industry every day, talk to contractors, talk to wholesalers every day. I think a lot of, uh, if not everything that you just mentioned is extremely pertinent to their business. Um, I see it work every day. Um, and uh, I think personally, although the highlight for me was uh, the uh, watching football on my phone song. So the good news is, <laughs> uh, the good news is that was recorded. So we can watch as many times as we need to. Uh-oh. So, um, yeah, I, I'd like to uh, just maybe take five or ten minutes to kind of talk real quick about uh, quick products, uh, mainstream engineering, um, and what we what we offer. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think I do have an interesting perspective on this in, in the sense that I, I was actually, uh, or I should say quick products, was actually a customer of uh, Marketing 360, uh, currently a customer and have been for, for quite some time. Um, so, personally, we can vouch for... Uh, um, excellent service uh, from Marketing 360, but uh, appreciate it. What uh, what JB has described, uh, in essence, would be uh, improving business processes, marketing techniques, um, reputation, uh, and what we uh, on my side um, like to um, or, or, or feel that we provide are quality products. Um, that, that solve real problems and are the actual tools during the job that, that solve real problems and and do so in a um, an economic way um, to uh, help keep that part of your business uh, running smoothly in terms of costs uh, and efficiency on the job. Um, so just really briefly, mainstream engineering, uh, we're an R&D company founded in 1986. Um, so half of our business is... Um, is uh, R&D government subcontracts, uh, and the other half of our business is the commercial side, uh, in which we manufacture uh, <clears throat> aftermarket parts and accessories for the HVAC uh, industry um, products. For example, that that you'd find in uh, um, essentially every wholesaler across the country and in Canada, Central and South America. Um, we manufacture everything on on property. Uh, so it's something that we're definitely proud of. Um, so the products, uh, from personally, from my standpoint, it's very interesting because I I see products go from concept to R and D to um, development and production. So it's a, um, a one stop shop really here. And and even more interesting than that is a lot of times um, the products that we introduce into the HVAC world are direct result from years and years of R and D into a contract that we had been working on where we actually see a commercial value or application to the end user. And uh, so in general, our products, there's a lot of uh, uh, research and development behind those products. Um, we could probably go to the, uh, the next slide, JP. Um, this is uh, really just an image to uh, kind of illustrate. Maybe some of you have seen uh, a few of these products before. The orange cans are are something that you know, uh, for the most part, techs and contractors see in uh, in um, locations around all over the United States, um, and and we work in in several different. What we try to do is make the best option in a specific uh, um, discipline uh, or segment of the job. So, in terms of acid and testing, um, EPA certifications, motor controls, coil cleaners. Um, we don't just do motor controls. We don't just do acid testing, but what we do uh, try to do is um, present the best, uh, most innovative product in that in that part of the field. Um, you could probably go to the uh, go to the next one. Um, and in line with that uh, is QuickSwap V3. I just wanted to mention really quick um, that, like like many of our other products, is a direct result of R and D. We want a uh, a contract with the Department of Energy years and years ago um, to improve efficiency in air conditioning units. And that has sort of evolved into what, what today uh, we call QuickSwap V3. Um, and this is an extremely interesting product in terms of uh, value to the contractor. This is a product that uh, um, is a universal replacement for any ECM variable speed motor, um, much more cost effective and much more readily available. Uh, there's a video there. You don't have to watch it now, but uh, uh, feel free to watch that demonstration video. I think if, if you haven't heard of QuickSwap V3, it's definitely something that uh, 
is is would be highly valuable uh, to you and your technicians on the job. Um, this next slide kind of just to illustrate quick swap capabilities um, and uh, compare it to a couple of the um, other products on the market that, that live uh, in the same world in terms of variable air, uh, airflow ECM replacement. Um, and uh, definitely, you, I think it's already been mentioned in the chat, but this, this presentation will be available to you. So if you want to take a look at this chart, uh, um, you know, look a, a little bit more in depth, but it's essentially what it's just trying to illustrate is um, the, the capabilities that, that you have with uh, QuickSwap as your ECM replacement um, versus some of the competition and, and what maybe some of their uh, challenges might be with those products. Um, so yeah, feel free to take a look. Um, you know, after the presentation, and, and also I'll give you my contact info if anyone has any questions about that. I mentioned these already. These are the uh, Quick System Flush cans. Um, definitely a staple for our line uh, in terms of value to the contractor. These these tend to be significantly less expensive than. than similar products on the market. And again, that's just because we are we are the manufacturer. The product is going straight from us to, to the wholesaler where you guys um, shop. Um, so you can, uh, you know, obviously feel free to check out that um, how-to video there. Um, we also have uh, uh, links and, and information on our website. We have an SDS comparison on our website between Quick System Flush and, uh, and a main competitor in the market just to kind of give you guys an idea. And then um, these are actually really exciting, condenser and, and generator pads. So uh, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, we don't, uh, we don't just do motor controls or just do acid testing. Well, here in Florida, for example, that first pad on the top, uh, in Florida, the, a, a huge deal is to have a very heavy um, condenser pad. You have to because of hurricane ratings and, and so on. Um, so this is a problem in the industry. This is, you know, people, these concrete pads, they, they're, they're hard to move around, they break, um, they crack, people drop them on their feet, they drop them on their hands during install, et cetera. Um, so what we did was we developed a rotor molded pad that, for example, uh, you can see the two sizes there, but um, that weighs about 25 pounds, 30 pounds. Very easy to use, uh, move around. And then you actually fill it with water uh, when you get it where you need it to be and there's a polymer inside of it that turns to a gel um, so the gel obviously protects it from freezing uh, and expanding and contracting um, but it goes from a very nice lightweight to a very heavy um, actually heavier than the concrete pads um, and so great product for florida but actually it's expanded across the country for rooftop uh, applications as well as obviously it's uh, much easier to get that product up up to the top of a roof. Um, and then right below it, uh, possibly even more popular than that has become um, the, uh, the quick pad. Um, that's the uh, generator pad. So universal generator, standby generator pad, same concept, extremely lightweight prior to install, um, but very heavy uh, uh, once installed and, uh, you know, uh, become very popular. So if you want more info on either one of those products, um, we've got uh, videos on our website. The video is obviously right in the uh, PowerPoint, but uh, and also again, feel free to contact me if you, if you have any more questions or looking to figure that out. We have a um, a uh, an Amazon storefront that uh, actually uh, Marking 360 helped us build. Um, so very, very grateful for that. But um, there are a few of our products that, uh, you know, obviously as technicians and contractors, you know that some products cannot be purchased by the general public. So those would only be available in wholesale supply houses. But uh, we do have a Amazon storefront where a select few of our products are, are available, uh, especially in this climate right now. I wanted to bring that up because a lot of supply houses are closed and, uh, you know, people just kind of quite frankly can't get uh, some, sometimes what they need. So we've got a plethora of products available there right on uh, right on Amazon. And uh, th this last slide, I, I believe it's the last slide, but um, I wanted to uh, definitely mention this. Um, in fact, if you were invited uh, to the webinar by me, you, you, you may already be familiar with this, but uh, we also operate a website called epitest.com. 
which um, I bring up in terms of, uh, well, first of all, this website was revamped by Marketing 360. So as a testimonial uh, to, if you could see what the website looked like before, uh, what this uh, screen grab looks like, um, you'd be pretty amazed, but uh, uh, much more uh, easy to, uh, to navigate now and a bit cleaner. But um, in terms of value, uh, again, um, JD uh, mentioned um, lots of information for in terms of value and, and business process and, and marketing and reputation. Um, what we bring to the table again for value um, is resume building, skill set building. You know, we, we've got this site set up so that uh, it's a, an inexpensive way for technicians and contractors alike to continue their education and build their resume in the process, um, making them more competitive in their perspective, uh, in their respective markets. Um, you know, so uh, kind of to JB's point, when, when you're out there in the field and your people are trying to make a choice about who to, who to go with, what contractor. So if, if um, what you're able to present to your customer is, you know, all my techs are 608 certified, they are 410A certified, they're preventative maintenance tech certified, and indoor air quality certified, et cetera. And, um, and they also get a quote from the competition who maybe only has one certification. Um, definitely, I think speaks volumes for, for you, well, not only what you know, what you, the knowledge your technicians have, but their dedication to the craft um, and their continued uh, um, determination to be better and do better. Um, so I'd just like to bring that up. Um, feel free to visit epitest.com uh, when you get a chance. Hey, not only, by the way, to check out our, our certifications, but to see kind of firsthand uh, some of the work that Marketing 360 has done in the past. Awesome. I appreciate it, Michael. Good stuff. Um, thanks, everybody, for attending today. And uh, if you have any additional questions, like I said, don't hesitate to give us a call or uh, send us an email. Reach out to us. Go to marketing360.com to learn more. Um, we will be following up this with a link to the video so you guys can reference back to that. Watch that. Also, Michael's presentation will be included in there as well. Um, and if you have any friends, HVACs, anybody you know you think you can, uh, that, that will benefit from this information, please send it along to them as well. Other than that, have a great day and happy marketing. Appreciate it.